Alright guys, so as you have heard, we have right now friendly deathmatch. Uh, for the day, um, Endgegner had uh, unfortunately lost. Uh, Pondgard won the, both games, even though they were quite uh, close, to be honest. So this was quite mm, quite interesting fight. And, uh, and uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely well-deserved win from the Pondgard at the end. But right now, as we have only two teams, as every week, we are going to do some friendly deathmatch uh, here with the, with the teams, just for fun. And uh, let's see where it goes. Let me unmute my game as well. And uh, yeah, let me know in the chat right now, guys. Have you ever seen something like that? 40 kills maximum, 13 versus 15 deathmatch. To be honest, I will. I, I don't think I will comment it. It's just too many things happening right now. We can see a lot of muskets, a lot of uh, short bows, a lot of damage dealers on the end of the front guard. Um, also, quite a few damage dealers on the end gagner side. But I guess yeah, more heavy armor is on the end gagner end. And uh, seems like front guard will be able to take the top point. But no, can the power magner and the Bailas from behind coming in, putting the pressure, kicking out all the pond guard from the top and seems like at the end this is equal right now we have three versus three at the top of the wall of the tower here and gegner still staying alive thanks to their superior heavy armor numbers and uh, yeah they will be taking the top right now so we'll see what they will do with that we can see that there is no artillery here on this map uh, just for fun so pure pure damage pretty much all around and the, yeah pond guard uh, Looks like they are playing with a lot of short bows and a lot of uh, musket players and focusing up on one one player at a time, trying to kill him as fast as possible and moving from one to another to another to another. You can see Susnop here on the back trying to kill... Oh, he managed to kill one of the guys, but uh, he was quickly taken down as well. And uh, looking at statistics right now, we can see leading with the kills on Pondgat, we can see Forgadon. And on Endegner's side, we can see that uh, we have Ravelas with two kills. 13 versus 6, so twice the amount of kills on Endegner's uh, side. Uh, sorry, the things are uh, other way around. Sorry for that. Ah, and now camera is gone. Great. Congratulations. I played myself. Stop with the mouse movement, please. Okay, so let me switch around the teams. Um, okay, now the team colors are reflected properly. Sorry for that. I was I was a bit confused by that, but yeah, uh, Payan being taken down right now, and uh, seems like Pondgard have taken back the top top tower. Um, is it necessarily a good thing? I don't think so. If I play on that match, I often use short bow, and to be honest, I prefer to fight on the equal ground so not being above or beyond below someone i prefer to fight with short bow on the same equal um, height so this tower is something different and uh, we'll see where it goes at the end seems like found guard still continuing with this uh, um, killing spree having 22 kills versus nine of a gegner seems like they are going to um, right now to win we'll see if and gegner will switch some weapons will switch some tactics of course this can be done during the game. You can, when you spawn, you can select uh, different weapons as far as they are the same uh, armor, right? So you cannot, if you have heavy armor equipped, you cannot choose light armor weapon. But uh, other than that, yeah, you can switch around, and uh, we'll see if they will adjust something. For now, 28 till to 11, almost triple amount of kills coming in from point guard. The amount of damage they have brought in with the muskets, with the short bows. I mean, the short bow doesn't have that much damage per se, right? Especially against heavy armor. But he has a lot of poison, a lot of stuns, a lot of staggers and, and whatnot. And uh, with that with that approach, they can keep people down very, very, very long. So let's see here. We can see us being unknown. down once more. He stand up, he's down, he stand up, he's down, and he dead. Pretty much that's how that's how hard it is to fight against such a spam of the short bows. And they are doing the same right now with the sharp player. They are right now focusing on Akeno. Now they are switching their focus to Rabelias and they are going to kill him in a moment. And they are moving 
forward up and we will see who will they try to focus Pian with a very good grenade killing one person and uh, moving out a few people but yeah close quarters novelty fighting here Takeno as well training with his spear um, they are trying their best but uh, 36 to 17 there is just four kills left for Fondgun to win this death match we'll see if they will be able to do it and uh, yeah two more left will be dying here seems like Ripcats will be dying and the power also very low dead and the battle is over yeah very <laughs> very interesting game very fast very heavy on kills and very heavy on action hard to comment something like that sorry for that especially if i'm alone so uh, uh yeah three frog saying that short was the highest dps arranged class in the game maybe yes maybe not uh, in my opinion depends it depends on the situation because uh, musket uh, have a very high piercing damage and piercing armor penetration so versus heavy armor musket if he's being able to um, you know hit headshot after headshot he can deal massive damage but it's very hard short bow damage per second is very uh, very good yes and you can hit much more often so it's also you know if you can hit 100 i would imagine that musket is bringing more damage but you cannot hit everything so yes that's why i use short bow as well very often on the death matches that's exactly the reason what, what you're writing so let's just say we are both right uh, let's jump into the interview we have all the casters here hi guys hi 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 uh, Ari, you're Hello. not you're muted yeah yeah and uh, professor alucard as well he's completely muted he can't hear us mm -hmm. yeah so i'm pinging him uh, to unmute Uh, okay, and uh, Samuel, maybe you can tell us in a, one sentence how did you like the participating in the games? <laughs> in the meantime, it was really fun. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, I already spoke about it in German in, mm -hmm. in German cast. Um, so they, the people were relaxed and uh sleepy <laughs> <laughs> they told us about it Relax. and um they gave us the call what we should use but uh Subway, for example said i'm good with glaive i want to use uh, cicalia and they said yeah okay you can do it no problem uh, so they were really uh, chilled out and uh, had, they had a, a plan uh, in general. They had a yeah. plan, like they, they said, we will f let fall A immediately, mm -hmm. then we will split up uh, on the two supplies. So, in general, there was a plan, but then everything was um, reactive to the enemy. Okay, so I guess we can ask them uh, ask them directly, as we have Payan here joining us in the interview, so I will invite him now. Welcome, Payan. Hello. Hello. Hi. Congratulations on your back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back victory, I guess, because the death match for fun was also the victorious. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if you could, fight. if you could introduce yourselves, yourself, and uh, shortly, and your yeah, team, sure. if you wish. Okay. Yeah. So I'm Payan. Um, I am the team leader of Pongard. And at first, we're, I mean, most of us are from the house, the Wolf Syndicate, and we're part of the Heavenly Kingdom Alliance. Um, and we're just, we started off playing the tournament for fun. Uh, actually, our first tournament was the first Ari tournament. So that was our first tournament ever. And that was really fun, too. Um, and now we're taking it more seriously because we're more into it. And we're more invested. So it's sure. definitely very fun. And I appreciate you guys hosting the tournament. Thanks. And it's, uh, let me tell you, it's definitely visible that you are taking it more seriously. This performance that we've seen today with all the viewers, I mean, it's, it's purely amazing. Uh, considering that you were taking on Endgegner, a very good team uh, from EU2. They have uh, won multiple objectives on Territory War. They also participated in multiple tournaments, uh, ranking there very highly. First question I would have to you is... Uh, what do you think about the Endgame in general, like playing against them today? 
Oh, definitely a good team. Um, the first strat they did on their offense, I never seen that before. Going through the the back side gate and all the way around um, our spawn area, like that was really unique, and I've never even seen that before. So that caught us off guard. Uh, we were scrambling, rotating, and um, it turned out okay for us in the end. But uh, definitely later, they also had some really good pushes, and they caught us off guard with a treb um, around the around the corner at home on one of their last pushes. So, a few times it was super close, and we're, we're I was, you can bet I was shouting, like, get on point, get on point, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah definitely, that, that was very, very interesting thing to watch as well and comment. And um, uh, about this, this strange action, uh, or maybe not, not, not unusual play from Endgiggler, uh, after seeing something like this in the first game, did you change something in your tactic and your plan for the second game, or? you went with what you had prepared early. So did you adopt? Um, yeah, I think we still went with our main plan. Um, to be honest, like we're taking like I said, we're taking more seriously, but as far as planning for this map, we did it very basic because we didn't want to plan for like every single situation, offense and defense of, of three potential maps. So we're like, we'll keep it simple, standard, standard play style, try not to get everybody confused. Um, Cause that's how we lost some tournaments before. We tried too hard to make a strategy and it's just too complicated, but we stuck to more simple tactics this time and just push as a team basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, uh, CB. Yeah, I got a question, Bjorn. Uh, I love playing with you guys. First of all, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs> sure, no problem. I put in the numbers in the second game as well, so I think you are happy with me. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Um, so we know, um, if, if our schedule is correct, that you will be playing Lamalans next week. Uh, sorry, in two weeks, of course, in the quarterfinals. Uh, have you watched any of their games, or and what do you think about facing them? Um, I do not know anything about them, so I guess I'll be doing some research later. Yeah, you'll have to. They, they showed some interesting games last week. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Yep. Are, have those been uploaded on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, you can watch those okay. on General Cobo's uh, YouTube stream. They're all okay. there. We'll yeah, I'll them. check that out for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna do okay. some research. <laughs> all right, good. Yeah, so you faced quite a few teams, of course, in the tournament scene, right? Um, what uh, what teams so far do you think are really good from EU and NA that you faced? Um, definitely the first one that strikes out is Eden because I think they're the only teams we've. Oh, and we lost to. Uh... A clarities last week in the core tournament um yeah. that one was closer though we it was more close than in terms of points um because the core tournament has a different tie breaking system with the battle points um but eden definitely um strikes out to me they definitely play very well as a team and we had one game where we like la our last person held on home for the last three seconds and barely won but uh we still lost pretty far in margin of battle points <laughs> so props to them for sure yeah, interesting. Cool. Yeah, we could definitely see Eclorite is getting better, right? Um, I think they lost uh, the first few games that they played, but then against you, they got the surprise win, I would say, for sure. So... Yeah, definitely. And they, they, I mean, props, like, I'm not blaming the scoring system at all, but they did a good job. What happened was, like, 15 of them all stepped on the cap point, and that's, you know, the rules are the rules, and we're not complaining about that, but um, they, they definitely played well within what they're supposed to do, and that's why they came out on top. And that's really good of them to do. And we, we messed up on our end. We, we should have been a little more prepared, but yeah, props to them. Cool. OK, uh, so Ari, Toshima, and Samuel, any questions from, from your base? Well, no question direct, but I just want to say thank you that you played even with 30 players. And um, I had to fill you up with Bergliebe. And, and, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to that question, did you think that um, you would had a better, um, have even more better games if you had your two team core members of the squad today? Um, I think it would have been probably about the same. Um, I mean, our two our two fill ins, Bergley B and CV, did great, so <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. Um, I mean, I don't think two people of Seemingly equal skill level probably would make a big difference, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with what we had. Yeah, after all, it's a team game, right? So 
Yeah, makes, and makes they, like um, the the two subins really communicated well and did great. Indeed. And we have also Professor Alucard, our Spanish caster. So are there any questions from your end? No, man. Like I said before, GG, man. Uh, you're the first team uh, in the tournament that won back to back to back, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you're literally the first team. Yeah. So congratulations yeah, on that. Yeah, thank you. And also, like, I mean, th those two matches could have went either way. Um, we did win really hard at units on the first battle, but they they got pretty close to capping, and that was really scary. So, like, it's not it doesn't matter how many units you have left if you all die and give up the point, which we almost did. So those that games could have went either way for sure. It was that push that got the guy with the trap. They killed like five or six heroes in one trap, and and that made the whole difference. Yeah. They killed a lot of units, and then some of us were like, "Oh crap! Like my units are red. Should I go heal?" It's like, "Oh yeah, go heal real quick." And then they push, and that was that caught us off guard for sure. Uh, I have to say that was probably the best trip I saw in a tournament, in a, like in any tournament. That that was a freaking amazing trip. Yeah, we uh probably should have prepared a little more, and or just known about it. But like, like I said, they they did a good job making making sure they caught catch us on our mistakes. Yeah, and uh, watching this, watching this from the top, actually, indeed, as you said, uh, at the end of the first game, I believe Adgiller had like seventy percent of the capture point done, and uh, this could go go either way. And I was um, considering if they would bring even more cavalry to this push and not bother even with the plus, but just go full ham on the last point. You had at this point of time you had only infantry, which is quite slow, and a lot of forte branches, for example, and, and uh, slow infantry, right? Uh, did you or uh, whoever is the shot caller in your team? Uh, was it uh, what was the if you could give us a, a voice com like a reaction? Was it calm or was it like oh my god, the, the we are burning? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, well, props to Maximus. He was our shot caller. Um, I think everybody was shouting to get on point and bring whatever we had because we were scrambling a bit. Um, most of us got wiped. I'm not sure exactly. I think definitely more than half of us died on that big push. Um, and then the rest of us are trying to hang on. And I think, I think we hurt them enough where our respawn with fresh units was able to push them off. But uh, yeah, we we all got back just in time. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so uh, as said, congratulations to, to your uh, victory today, taking the first place from the uh, from the group C. Uh, you will have to indeed rewatch some of the of the games of other groups to prepare um, as as well as you did today, I guess, for, for the next uh, for the next quarter final games. Those will be best of three, so a little bit different. We will see how it goes. And uh, yeah, if there are no other questions. No other questions for me, man. GG, that's it. Cool. No, just uh, GG for my side. Yeah, GG. GG indeed. Yeah, thank you guys for casting and hosting and sharing all this. This is really fun. I love it. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.